the reason we ch they chose the MSC is because that we've known for a lot of years that those are the ones that guide regeneration. Uh, they help change the immune system to be anti-inflammatory instead of pro-inflammatory. And um, yeah, so they tend to work really well in a bunch of situations where we have degeneration, like you know uh, the central nervous system, but also tendinosis, uh, arthritis, which is essentially cartilage degradation, even uh, things like uh, nerve degeneration that I've seen. Hi, this is Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior and the Medical Influencers Show. I want to welcome our special guest today, Dr. Ed Park. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Today, we're going to talk about all things exosomes. I guess that's a good way to start. <laughs> if you're involved in regenerative medicine and you haven't heard about exosomes, you need to learn about them. They are amazing. And actually, do, uh, Dr. Park has put a series of videos on YouTube. So if you want like an in-depth training, uh, besides from the show, uh, you can go on YouTube and look them up. And he has got some fantastic information about various topics that I'd like to talk about some today. Sure. So, uh, so thanks for joining me. Um, first of all, let's talk about exosomes in general. Like if somebody has heard of exosomes or, or they may have heard of it as, as called different things. Now, now, now exosomes have, has now multiple names. They call it uh, nanocellular particles, nano vesicles, regenerative, uh, acellular um, nano things. Right. It, so, so they've got a bunch of names. Um, I think that has to do with regulation, but basically the idea we're talking about is a, is really a sphere that holds different things in it and it can actually improve or change our health, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, just to follow up on what you said, the YouTube channel is DRPARK65. So yes. I put out uh, like basic science lectures explaining just what you're describing. There's spheres made by the cells to communicate. So, you know, up until about 12 or 14 years ago, no one really knew that these existed. They were just thrown out in the lab work and everyone just measured serum proteins and serum, whatever, genetics, RNA, DNA, whatever. But the fact of the matter is that unlike, uh, you know, throwing paper airplanes in the sky, usually cells communicate protecting their packages, their information in these tiny spheres that are about one five hundredth the size of the cells. So it's like trying to understand how people communicate without understanding like email or text or phone. So now in the last 12 years, there's been a realization that no, it, the stuff, the signals are not just being sent randomly out in the blood. Uh, they are protected in these tiny spheres. Yes. So basically in these spheres, what exactly is this message that what is, what is in the sphere that is influencing other cells? Uh, yeah, well, so what they do is they have to actually uh, crack them open like um, eggs or, you know, and and analyze them. That was okay. one of the first questions I asked the chief scientist. I said, well, if they're protected by the lipid bilayer, the sphere, how do you know what's in them? He goes, aha, good question. You have to crack them open. So there's a soap that they use. And then if they do it carefully enough, they don't dissolve the contents. And when they look at the contents, they run it through protein analyzer, through uh, RNA sequencing. And there's two flavors of RNA. There's messenger RNA, which, of course, any cell can take and start to produce. That's the, de that's the basis of this Moderna COVID vaccine, right? They're giving you mRNA. And the messenger so can... RNA, and, and what does the messenger RNA really do? Right. So the messenger RNA is just a little uh, transcript. It's, it, it feeds into the machinery of the cell, the ribosomes, and it produces a protein, a bespoke specific protein. So Moderna and their Pfizer partner want us to make 
uh, I presume, uh, capsule or envelope proteins for COVID so that our body can then create an immune response. But yeah. in this case, you know, we're not getting into all that. Your cells are always communicating with, with each other using proteins, but messenger RNA, which are more powerful than proteins, it's like, you know, it can produce many, many thousands of versions of the protein, not just one. And then we have something called microRNA, which is also an RNA, but it's a 22 base sequence that gums up a specific uh, messenger RNA. So it actually puts the brakes on certain proteins that you don't want to express. So those are the three major things. There's some lipids and other things, but pretty much that's how they communicate these uh, exosomes. So they have messenger cells. RNA, which is for protein creation. They yes. have micro RNA, which actually stops the creation right. of proteins. And you also have uh, actually proteins in there as well, is correct? Right, you are or, correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so a cell wants to communicate to another cell. And so how do we use these as a therapy, uh, uh, you know, to, to help us uh, regenerate or heal our bodies? How does that work? Well, at this point, there's really only one flavor. That's the mesenchymal stem cell from a newborn placenta that was delivered by C-section. Um, there are people working on other types, like because all different kinds of cells have all different kinds of music, if you will, that they play. So right. in the future, they might have from neural stem cells mm -hmm. or, you know, bone cartilage, this kind of thing. But uh, so the reason we ch they chose the MSC is because that we've known for a lot of years that those are the ones that guide regeneration. Uh, they help change the immune system to be anti-inflammatory instead of pro-inflammatory. And um, yeah, so they tend to work really well in a bunch of situations where we have degeneration, like you know uh, the central nervous system, but also tendinosis, uh, arthritis, which is essentially cartilage degradation, even uh, things like uh, nerve degeneration that I've seen. Hey, this is Dr. Ross Carter again. Listen, um, if you're a doctor or a medical professional or interested in adding exosomes to your practice, or if you're actually a potential patient who's interested in exosomes, I want you to listen. Now, the company that we're recommending um, on this podcast, I, I have a, uh, an agreement with. Basically, I refer them business. Now, I would rather, if you're getting exosomes, make sure to get it from an actual company and not a distributor. So I'm not you know, doing it that way. Basically, I'm just referring you to them. If, but if I do refer them to you or you to them, basically what you'll get is not only will you get product from them uh, at the best price you can get, but you'll also get an additional bonus of free uh, amniotic exosome products as well. So, so what that means is if you order uh, the uh, the placental exosomes, the MSC exosomes, you'll get in addition for free amniotic ex uh, exosomes absolutely free. So if you're using amniotic exosomes, you're already paying for those. And so you get a you get a vial of those for free with with purchase of the MSC exosomes. And hopefully you see the, the, the difference in the value by now. If you're a patient and considering this and you think, hey, I'd like to do this procedure. Um, all you got to do is you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you places that could be close to you. So here's how to contact me. Just go to my, just send me an email at drrosscarter at gmail.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R -S -S -E at gmail.com. Or you can call or text me at 561-962-1231. That's 561-962-1231. So either email me or text me or call me. It's just best to email or text me and I can get back with you with that information. So if you're considering this, uh, let me uh, you know, be the reference point and it, it helps to support the show. Obviously, uh, I get a little uh, a benefit if I refer you. So um, I wanna be transparent about that. So please support the show and email or text me and I can get you connected and give you the best prices plus a special is you're going to get additional amniotic fluid exosomes for free. Can't beat that. So uh, I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the show. Uh, I'll let it continue. Here you go. So, so basically, these these exosomes have the ability to 
uh, decrease inflammation if necessary and stimulate regeneration. Is, is that the essence of what we're saying? Yes, precisely. Uh -huh. Perfect. So we're using these, these exosomes, these signals, not from just any cell. We're using them from, say, a mesenchymal stem cell, which is uh, able to, to perform all these things. Because if it was just from you know, an epithelial cell, uh, you, you, it might not stimulate any regeneration at all. Or, or it might not help with yeah, the information. Exactly. I mean, we, we don't <clears throat> we don't really understand how most of these things work, let alone work together in tandem. So, um, you know, your point is well taken. You know, we we want to get the master controllers, the MSCs, because usually they're doing things like growing new blood vessels, turning down inflammation, uh, orchestrating a shift in the immune phenotype towards regeneration and away from autoimmunity. So, um, yeah, but, you know, we're not fooling ourselves. I mean, you can run mRNA tests and figure out, you know, which mRNAs are in there, but that doesn't mean you're a fantastic musician. It's like being able to pick out an F sharp or an a, a natural. It's like, that doesn't mean you're, you know, WC. So that's kind of uh, exactly. So, and, and, you know, if you look at the initial literature, um, when people start to realize, hey, you know, the action is not actually in the serum, it's in these hidden things that we've been throwing out. A lot of the literature looks at people with cancer, with kidney failure, liver disease. And so just as good exosomes do good things, in quotes, bad exosomes do bad things. So if you take uh, exosomes from somebody who's succumbing to breast cancer, yes. and you put them in a normal woman's breast, they will induce transformation as well. If you have somebody that's getting over a kidney failure and you take exosomes from that person, then the signals are conducive to getting over kidney failure. So it's not all good music or bad music, you know, so. Yes, because if you look up <coughs> exosomes online, a lot of people will see that exosomes are related to cancer. And so they found that you can monitor or determine cancer types based on the exosomes that are, I believe in the urine, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. So in the urine, in the blood, sure. But and it's just like, yes. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, just common sense that, you know, if you're li listening to acid rock or death metal or, you know, whatever, uh, this is different music than listening to, you know, little etudes by Mozart or whatever. So just because you say something is a song, it doesn't mean it has the same effect in everyone all the time or the same intended effect. I so, agree. Yeah, you, you got the uh, exosomes from somebody dying of cancer or cirrhosis. These are probably some bad exosomes. Right. Or they have bad contents in them. That makes sense. My so, you know, I heard there was, uh, I remember hearing that, um, what's the difference between an exosome and a virus? Yeah, no, in the initial COVID days, I got a lot of questions about that. Uh, but I guess there are many types of viruses, first of all. You know, virus is just a non-living thing that produces uh, effects in a cell that can allow it to reproduce, right? Yes. But it needs the cells. So there are some that are shaped like little cool little uh, bacteriophages. You know, there's some made out of DNA, single double strand, RNA, single double strand. But the reason that coronavirus looks like these exosomes that we use is because they're hijacked. Uh, they're hijacking the same machinery. So the same machinery uh, in the endoplasmic reticulum that's making these 100 nanometer spheres is what the programming of the COVID uh, or the coronavirus uses. So they come out the same, except right. they have different surface proteins. Uh, but the same packaging is the same. So it's like you get those little toy balls in the supermarket with little stickers or toys in them, right? right. Well, you know, you could put like stickers and toys in there or you could put, you know, nine millimeter rounds or, you know, tabs of LSD. You know, you could do whatever you want, but it's, they look the same because they're made by the same machinery. I, I love your extreme examples. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, um, so if someone, so what conditions uh, can be, I guess, could benefit from, from exosomes? What conditions have you 
worked with or seen that, that have benefited from use of exosome therapies? You know, I've been doing this uh, under two years. Uh, I just met um, Duncan almost two years ago at a conference. And uh, at that time I was doing um, some consulting for a company that wanted to use exosomes for anti-aging. So in that time, I'm looking at my tally to the right here. I've had about 120 patients in about over 400 sites. So typically I'll, I'll inject multiple. If a person buys a vial of 5 million, I won't just charge them multiple procedure charges. I'll put some, a lady's coming today, I'll put some in her epidural space, and she also wants some in the nasal. So uh, to answer your question, they're pretty good for a lot of different conditions. Uh, one thing I haven't been super happy about is um, Lyme. Lyme is a very complicated chronic, at least the people that don't clear it. Yeah. But other than that, it's been really good for people in terms of memory focus. Um, the advanced Alzheimer's, I haven't been super satisfied with that. Uh, but I recently uploaded a video on um, dental. That was my last one. The one before that was stroke rehab. I have a patient in LA who is uh, trying to get better. And in fact, she is regaining movement and sensation. So that's exciting. But I would say our bread and butter is, you know, bum knees, bad shoulders, um, things like that. Hey, this is Dr. Ross Carter again. Listen, um, if you're a doctor or a medical professional or interested in adding exosomes to your practice, or if you're actually a potential patient who's interested in exosomes, I want you to listen. Now, the company that we're recommending um, on this podcast, I, I have a, an agreement with. Basically, I refer them business. Now, I would rather, if you're getting exosomes, make sure to get it from an actual company and not a distributor. So I'm not you know, doing it that way. Basically, I'm just referring you to them. If, but if I do refer them to you or you to them, basically what you'll get is not only will you get product from them uh, at the best price you can get, but you'll also get an additional bonus of free uh, amniotic exosome products as well. So, so what that means is if you order uh, the, uh, the placental exosomes, the MSC exosomes, you'll get in addition for free amniotic ex uh, exosomes absolutely free. So if you're using amniotic exosomes, you're already paying for those. And so you get a, you get a vial of those for free with, with purchase of the MSC exosomes, and hopefully you see the, the, the difference in the value by now. If you're a patient and considering this and you think, hey, I'd like to do this procedure, um, all you got to do is you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you places that could be close to you. So here's how to contact me. Just go to my, just send me an email at drrosscarter at gmail.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R -S -S -E at gmail.com. Or you can call or text me at 561-962-1231. That's 561-962-1231. So either email me or text me or call me. It's just best to email or text me and I can get back with you with that information. So if you're considering this, uh, let me uh, you know be the reference point and it, it helps to support the show. Obviously, uh, I get a little uh, a benefit if I refer you. So. Um, I want to be transparent about that. So please support the show and email or text me and I can get you connected and give you the best prices. Plus, a special is you're going to get additional amniotic fluid exosomes for free. Can't beat that. So uh, I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the show. Uh, I'll let it continue. Here you go. And what about like anti-aging things like that to... Oh, for sure. I mean, if money is not an object, I would probably, I could make an argument for taking, you know, billions every two months. You right. Because it seems to have such powerful effects for temporarily regenerating uh, in terms of your vessels, your cardiac health, uh, even centrally, your pituitary hypothalamus. Uh, there was an interesting, I always get articles to comment on from people. And there was uh, one out of I guess Sinclair and Harvard, where they use some of the Yamagata factors to turn back um, uh, eye disease. But you have to be careful. It's always, you have to be careful because they're using an AAV, yeah. so uh, adenovirus associated virus. Yeah. So when they tell you you're doing gene therapy, you're causing inadvertent splicing into the genome. 
another study someone just sent to me about they CRISPRed one of the the uh, the shelter in which is a telomere handling molecule. They CRISPRed that. They think you're doing a gene editing. It's splicing into. It's causing errors. So it's 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 kind of like the island of Dr. Moreau stuff. But whereas with the exosomes from a newborn baby, we're just transiently modifying the behavior. There's no mechanism to introduce new genes and cause, you know, DNA mutation, which is what scares me. I mean, sure, you might get better vision, but are you going to get teratomas? Are you going to get um, you know, inadvertent mutation elsewhere? You got to be careful with that kind of technology. Absolutely. Speaking of that, now there are different companies that uh, that that offer exosomes. There's different types. There's some that come from bone marrow. There's some that come from amniotic fluid. There's some that come from Wharton's jelly and placental tissue and all that. How how do you determine um, when when you're you're considering an exosome? What how do you know what to look for? Because you've got uh, one company saying, hey, we've got, you know, we've got 50 billion blah, blah, blah or, uh, particles. Uh, and then you got another one that says, well, we have 500 billion. So you're thinking is is is, you know, the number of particles, the or exosomes is what they call them. But the number is that is that the, the critical factor or what is it that we should look for as a doctor uh, when you're determining what kind of exosomes to use and what kind of com- what company to use? I mean, it's such an important question. And, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about it in terms of a, a granular level. And the pun is totally an in- intentional pun. Uh, you know, I just visited the headquarters at Chimera and I talked to the chief uh, quality control and one of the chief officers of science there. And they have machinery, you know, nanosite thing. So basically this thing just counts the number of small particles. And can right. tell you how big they are. So it, looks like, talk- it looks like uh, when you look at the like one of those uh, Hubble space things, and you're just seeing the space, and you see all these billions of stars everywhere. That's what yeah. it kind of looks. Like. Oh yeah, yeah, but you know the technology is valid; it's solid. But you know you're getting particles. So, for example, a really bad comparison would be 500 billion exosomes from amniotic fluid and whatever from a pure culture of cells. The pure culture of MSC cells is only secreting MSC exosomes and maybe some apoptotic bodies or whatever. So if you filter that, uh, then you're going to get uh, a size discrimination, and mm-hmm. they can also tag it. They have a machine where they can radio label the specific CD markers that indicate they are these you know, typical exosomes. But if you're talking about 500 particles from antioch fluid as an OBGYN, I can tell you that the particles, the amniotic fluid, a lot of them are just skin and poop. Exactly. So, you know, 500 mil- billion particles of skin and poop arguably is not the same uh, as uh, 500 billion 100 nanometer spheres with, you know, precisely defined proteins and mRNAs. Right, with stem cell signals instead of poop signals. Yeah, but, you know, the, the thing is that... Um, for a lot of people, this is a revenue source, and it's just, uh, you know, buyer beware, and the buyer doesn't really understand that granular detail. They think, oh, it's the same thing. 500 billion is 500 billion. I might as well get, you know, more for less. But, right. you know, to answer your question, as a practicing clinician, I try and do what works, what's safe. And I, it's really important that I understand that the scientists or the reps, hopefully both, understand what my questions are. If they have no idea what even a nanosite is or, or what the CD markers are, that's a kind of a red flag. Mm-hmm. And if and if they're trying to compare, you know, apples with, you know, orange juice, I'm just like, uh, you know, I don't want anything to do with it. But I listen, yeah. I keep an open mind. I talk to other doctors who are trying other brands. But uh, I always worry when people are all about the margin and, you know, turning over product and they overpromise because that just sends up warning signs to me. Exactly. I need something so, that's safe and effective and reasonably priced. And I, I'm not going to risk my time because, you know, you get, you know how it is. If you get one unhappy patient, it just drags on you. And so why risk it 
it, you know, it can be, you know, of course a lawsuit, but worse than that, you know, bad outcome. So we're always trying to mitigate. So I would put my success rate, you know, somewhere around 80, 90%, depending on how you define a positive response. But yeah, I'm trying to keep away from the duds. I'm trying to keep away from the things that are too inflammatory. And I'm trying to keep away from companies that are pop-up shops and they don't really have the investment in science or the knowledge or the quality control. Hey, this is Dr. Ross Carter again. Listen, um, if you're a doctor or a medical professional or interested in adding exosomes to your practice, or if you're actually a potential patient who's interested in exosomes, I want you to listen. Now, the company that we're recommending um, on this podcast, I, I have a, an agreement with. Basically, I refer them business. Now, I would rather, if you're getting exosomes, make sure to get it from an actual company and not a distributor. So I'm not you know, doing it that way. Basically, I'm just referring you to them. If, but if I do refer them to you or you to them, basically what you'll get is not only will you get product from them uh, at the best price you can get, but you'll also get an additional bonus of free uh, amniotic exosome products as well. So, so what that means is if you order uh, the, uh, the placental exosomes, the MSC exosomes, you'll get in addition for free amniotic ex uh, exosomes absolutely free. So if you're using amniotic exosomes, you're already paying for those. And so you get a, you get a vial of those for free with, with purchase of the MSC exosomes. And hopefully you see the, the, the difference in the value by now. If you're a patient and considering this and you think, hey, I'd like to do this procedure, um, all you got to do is you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you places that could be close to you. So here's how to contact me. Just go to my, just send me an email at drrosscarter at gmail.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R -S -S -E at gmail.com. Or you can call or text me at 561-962-1231. That's 561-962-1231. So either email me or text me or call me. It's just best to email or text me and I can get back with you with that information. So if you're considering this, uh, let me uh, you know be the reference point and it, it helps to support the show. Obviously, uh, I get a little uh, a benefit if I refer you. So um, I wanna be transparent about that. So please support the show and email or text me and I can get you connected and give you the best prices plus, a special is you're going to get additional amniotic fluid exosomes for free. Can't beat that. So uh, I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the show. Uh, I'll let it continue. Here you go. You know, when I, when I would look at, uh, when I would want to evaluate companies that I, I did myself, when I would ask them, hey, can I come by your lab? They would be like kind of shocked, be like, um, you know, anytime they have that hesitation of, hey, come check out our lab. They're not, they don't want you to come to their lab because they oh, usually yeah. have one. They're, 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 a, they're a white labeling. Yeah. They're resellers. Yeah. There's a reason why people like open kitchens, you know, you get to see the rats scurrying across the floor or not, you know? So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. And I also, also, I like, yeah, I like to buy from a lab. I like to buy from the, the person responsible for, for the, for the product, not just some rep, because if, if things go down in a bad way with the patient, I mean, what are you going to do? Go after the rep? You know, they said, you yeah. Know, and this is the history, as you know, of, of regenerative medicine It's the bad batch story, right? It only takes one to put people out of business, right? Uh, somebody using a product wrong and uh, someone goes blind. I mean, this stuff, uh, you know, you don't get a second chance to land a plane, you know, so... Well, sometimes you do, but it depends on if, so if, if you touch you down, you come up, touch down. Yeah, yeah. But if it's already crashed, it's too late. I've so. actually been in a plane that landed twice. They landed and they took right back off and landed oh, again. So yeah, no, I know. Apparently somebody know. was in our way. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Bad analogy, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I, 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 uh, do, I do know what you mean. So, um, so basically, you know, when it comes to picking out an exosome company, you need to look at a lot of factors. Don't just jump on price 
or total number of particles that they say, and they'll always say they're exosomes. They have, I have, you know, a number of exosomes. It's like, really? Are you sure they're all exosomes, right? You know, can you prove that they're exosomes? And what about what, what kind of exosomes are they? Are they epithelial cells, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to go deeply into it, I was talking to the head of uh, one of the other labs that, yep. um, and he showed me his nanocyte chart and there were plots, scatter plot went out two, three, 400 nanometers. And that's typically in the range of what we call apoptotic bodies, which are, you know, which are spheres made when a cell dies. Right. So he said, oh, it's just they're like grade triple E instead of like grade A eggs. They're just big eggs and they're so much bigger and better. Oh. So, you know, I, I reserve judgment on that. But, you know, the typical and I, I asked um, the head scientist at Chimera what he thought about that. And, you know, he was open minded about it. But, it's you know, it's unclear to me that, you know, that's true. Right. So he says, well, bigger is better because of, you know, whatever pi cubed four thirds and we right. got so Volume much bigger and better, but is a dinosaur egg really the same as, you know, like a uh, partridge egg? Mm -hmm. Are those even eggs? Maybe they're just big bags of trash, you know? So uh, at the end of the day, I want something that is safe from the patients that has a good effect. It has a wide therapeutic index. Like you could take 50 vials and the only thing that would get damaged is your pocketbook. Right. So I think that's the kind of, uh, gestalt I have about this current product I'm using. It, it's very safe and uh, it's highly active and that's good enough for me right now because I haven't seen a compelling value equation yet. You know, when I talk to the PhDs and I've talked to the owners and operators of pretty much every company, the kind of responses I'm getting are not like you said, like, oh, welcome, look at our kitchen. Let's see. We'll talk about it, you know, at length. We have nothing to hide. It's more like, uh, blah, 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 blah. Those guys are no good. Our guys are good. It's like, okay. Yeah, they, they all say they're, that everybody else sucks and we're the best and we've got a brand new product and we've, you know, everything is this, that, and the other. And, and, and you know, since, you know, the doctors are the first line of defense and they're the ones that get in trouble, you know, a rep can say anything they want. And, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen? They get fired and then they just Yeah, go to for sure. Uh, but, you know, because we're in this regulated, semi-pseudo regulated area of right. biologics, you know, it's, there's a lot of gray area and people taking a lot of liberties. But as a former OBGYN or I'm still, I guess, an OBGYN, you know, I've had patients, one patient die on me from amniotic fluid embolism now. You know, there's probably a lot of reasons that. why that happens. Oh, yeah. You know, and I actually read about that because I had not heard about that until recently because there's, there's, there's some companies out there that are promoting using amniotic fluid and they call it uh, nanoparticles that include exosomes and collagen and, you know, just 50 different – it's like a soup of mi stuff. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a really bad idea to me. And, you know, actually I – I'm going to say the lady almost died on me. I actually had the circulating nurse say the time so we could note her. She had, her pulse was like 40. Her oxygen was like 60%. And uh, it was terrifying. But luckily, we had a great anesthesiologist, and he recognized what was going on. And he poured her during the C-section, poured like a full complement of blood and platelets and uh, oh. clotting factors. And somehow, she walked out of the hospital neurologically intact four days later with a healthy baby. That's which, fortunate. Which, yeah, it yeah was and, like and actually, actually, the uh, um, amniotic embolism is one of the leading causes of death of women who ha are worldwide who die from having a child. Yeah, what well, I mean, it's probably way underdiagnosed, but uh, you know, it's the kind of thing you only want to see once, and it, you know, it is what it is. But like that puts a little bit of the fear of God into me, so I don't love. But all these things like Wharton's jelly, I, I don't see the biological premise of that. I mean, and, and anytime you take a, something that has antigens on it, HLA antigens, yes, you know, histocompatibility antigens, you're talking about graft versus host stuff, host versus graft. This is not what uh, I signed up for. Same as for bone marrow. I want something that is plug and play. It's universal, right? It doesn't have those antigens that are going to cause a reaction. Mm, I totally agree. So I, I got a question. I, I want to know if you, you, you've heard how this works. 
how does the exosome find an inflamed area? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, find is a loaded word. I, I mean, that's, I think, uh, you know, it's probably not that they find, probably they're just like these uh, dandelion seeds, they stick to anything because it's just a lipid bilayer sticking to a lipid bilayer. So if it goes to your blood, just like stem cells, they probably land a lot in the lungs and the spleen, the reservoirs nice. like that, that are like pool filters, right? Yep. So that's why it's important to put them where you want them because they're gonna get taken up by any cells that have a lipid bilayer. But there is a kind of a, a an answer to that. You know, if you have an area of active inflammation, yes. uh, then there is more blood delivery there. There is um, opening of the capillaries. So there is preferential treatment. Like if you have an abscess on your hand, then yeah, things will find it because there's a relatively higher level of blood flow. So the number of passes through your system is going to be greater in an inflamed area. But um, it's probably more of a stochastic thing. You're probably just flooding the system. But you know, Five billion sounds like a lot, but when you talk about we have like, I don't know, seven trillion cells and then probably an order of magnitude more than that of exosomes, like quadrillion, it's probably not a lot. It's probably like putting food coloring in a swimming pool, you know. <laughs> nice example. <laughs> I love it. Excellent. Excellent. So is there anything that I that we should talk about that I've that, that I've missed? Uh, no, I, I would just direct people back to my YouTube channel if they want to learn at their own pace. There are, there's a, a nine videos talking about all these topics, and they're pretty long, but they're just short little 30-minute uh, videos about things from you know, knee problems, shoulder problems, back problems. Um, next week is going to be erectile dysfunction. So they can sign up at my website, www.rechargebiomedical.com. And I'll send them out a weekly email or two, and they can participate in live webinars, and they can ask me live questions as well if they're interested. Perfect. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. Well, Dr. Ed Park, it was a pleasure speaking with you, and thank you so much for taking the time and your, uh, your, your busy beach schedule there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Carter. It was my pleasure, and uh, you have a great one. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Right. Bye. Take care. Hey, this is Dr. Ross Carter again. Listen, um, if you're a doctor or a medical professional or interested in adding exosomes to your practice, or if you're actually a potential patient who's interested in exosomes, I want you to listen. Now, the company that we're recommending um, on this podcast, I, I have a, an agreement with. Basically, I refer them business. Now, I would rather, if you're getting exosomes, make sure to get it from an actual company and not a distributor. So I'm not, you know, doing it that way. Basically, I'm just referring you to them. If, but if I do refer them to you or you to them, basically what you'll get is not only will you get product from them uh, at the best price you can get, but you'll also get an additional bonus of free uh, amniotic exosome products as well. So, so what that means is if you order uh, the uh, the placental exosomes, the MSC exosomes, you'll get in addition for free amniotic ex uh, exosomes absolutely free. So if you're using amniotic exosomes, you're already paying for those. And so you get a you get a vial of those for free with with purchase of the MSC exosomes. And hopefully you see the, the, the difference in the value by now. If you're a patient and considering this and you think, hey, I'd like to do this procedure. Um, all you got to do is you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you places that could be close to you. So here's how to contact me. Just go to my, just send me an email at drrosscarter at gmail.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R -S -S -E at gmail.com. Or you can call or text me at 561-962-1231. That's 561-962-1231. So either email me, or text me or call me. It's just best to email or text me and I can get back with you with that information. So if you're considering this, uh, let me uh, you know, be the reference point and it, it helps to support the show. Obviously, uh, I get a little uh, a benefit if I refer you. So um, I wanna be transparent about that. So please support the show and email or text me 
and I can get you connected and give you the best prices. Plus, a special is you're going to get additional amniotic fluid exosomes for free. Can't beat that. So uh, I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the show. Uh, I'll let it continue. Here you go.